There's a lot that goes into editing a film. Planning, selects, music, pacing, color correction, color grading, sound design, exporting. I've made videos about pretty much all of these topics individually, but in this one, I want to kind of zoom out and show you the entire process and how all of these pieces fit together in order. First though, I should clarify that my process changes depending on the project and is always gradually evolving. And I also believe that having too rigid of a process while efficient can stunt your creativity pretty heavily. It's important to be flexible and experimental, and more and more recently I'm trying to make every project a new creative challenge, staying away from preset colors and sounds and graphics in hopes of finding something new each time. Think of it like a sliding scale, one side disorganized and the other uninventive. This is my attempt to find something in the middle, a process that maintains order without hindering creativity. Unfortunately, this process is not always successful. Um, this is an example of an attempt to make this video more exciting and more of a creative challenge gone a little wrong. Um, it looks cool, but I don't think you can hear me particularly well. So I'm going to have to begrudgingly throw in the towel, go back to the traditional indoor A-roll setup, and go ahead and thank the sponsor of today's video, Loop Deck. Thanks. So first I want to give you a quick overview of what this thing is and then later on throughout the video I'll be sprinkling in a few more examples of how I use it in different parts of my process. This is the Loop Deck Live. It's a nifty little console that basically gives you control of your software beyond what just a mouse and keyboard can offer. It has these six sliders and 12 buttons in the middle, all of which can be mapped to pretty much any control or function within the software you're using. And you can also map one of these buttons to perform multiple actions in a sequence. I've had this one, the Loop Deck Live, for about a year now, and they have larger panels available, but I really like the simplicity and portability of this smaller one. You can save a bunch of different preset layouts and then swap between them while you're editing. So I have a few set up for different parts of my editing process. And all of this is done through the Loop Deck software, which they've just recently updated, so it has a nice shiny new UI and some new features as well. I use this primarily for Premiere Pro, but it's also compatible with Lightroom, Photoshop, Spotify, streaming software, most of the software that you're gonna find yourself using. And one of my unexpected favorite features of it is just the default layout that it comes with for just like scrolling around on your desktop or on Chrome. You can easily adjust your brightness, your volume, you can scroll around wherever you are and you can easily open up like the calculator or your settings, activity monitor, finder, all those little programs that you need to open up all the time. Hey Siri, if I were to hypothetically go out and shoot this video in the woods, would that be a good idea? You really think you're funny. Get out of my face and talk about your silly little editing process. My editing begins with a preparation stage, which is kind of just getting all of the boring, mindless tasks out of the way. So I'll make sure that all of my footage is imported and organized. I'll process any time lapses I have in Lightroom, then bring them into Premiere. I'll make proxies, which are basically just lower resolution previews that you use to speed up your editing. This is also when I'll make my selects. So going through all of the footage and chopping out just the usable parts of each clip. And this is one of my favorite things to do using this Loop Deck Live. It just makes this process way faster because I can easily scroll through the clip at different speeds here, find the point where I need it to come in, easily mark an endpoint, scroll through to the end, mark a nice out point, and then easily just drop it right onto the timeline. Way easier than clacking around with a hundred different buttons trying to do that on every single one of your thousands of clips. Once I've gotten the boring stuff out of the way, there's a planning stage where I'm basically just revisiting my pre-production for the project in the context of the footage that was actually captured so that I can then make a plan for the edit. So I'll write out an outline in a digital document or even a lot of the time in a physical notebook. So you can see in this one, I'm starting on some planning for a big edit that I'm starting to work on soon. So I've got just several pages 
of going through seeing which footage I have and deciding how I want to work with it. So I have a general idea of what I want to do going into the edit. Typically I'll plan out the general structure of the edit, the different sequences that make the video up, how's it gonna begin, how's it gonna end, and then any random ideas that I might have for like effects, transitions, cuts, you get the idea. It feels a little silly, but this is editing. It's a very important part of the process. After this, I'll move on to music. And the first step here is to scroll around on music bed for hours, if not days, until I find roughly what I'm looking for, then download that, slap it into Premiere. I almost always end up making some changes to that track to optimize it for the video that I want to make. So I might shorten or lengthen different parts of the song to accommodate the desired pacing and video length that I'm going for. So on a recent project, here is the track that I started with, and here it is by the time that I was done chopping it up. Once that's done, I'll go through the timeline again and use markers to make note of any important kind of rises or moments within that track, any important notes in my voiceover where I want to put a specific shot, and also marking kind of the general structure of the edit so I don't get carried away and make one sequence like way too long or one way too short. You can see on the Loop Deck Live here, I've mapped one of these dials to easily add a new marker at the playhead and then to jump around between all of the markers on the timeline. All right, now we can move on and start actually cutting some clips, but not doing anything more. The next stage here is a rough assembly. So the most basic kind of skeleton form of an edit doing nothing more than just cutting the clips on the timeline. If there's a situation where I might need to see if I can color a shot, see if it's gonna be possible to stabilize it, then I might do that as kind of a test run to see if I should keep that shot in or not. But for the most part, I'm not putting any effects on any clips until this is locked in. The idea is that once this is complete, you can watch through the video and it will not look pretty but you will understand what I'm trying to do. You'll get the storyline. And this is the part of the process where I think having a tool like the Loop Deck Live comes in ridiculously handy because you're really just making the same small handful of adjustments over and over and over again. And you can put all of those adjustments right here in one place. So you can easily scrub through the timeline at different speeds, jump between different clips, adjust the track height, the audio track height, add markers as I said before, you're doing a lot of like ripple deleting clips, that kind of thing. You can easily make cuts and adjust the speed and duration of a clip. During this part of the process, I'm also turning my proxies on and off quite a lot, full screening the clip, then going back to the regular view. You get the idea. So after I finished my rough assembly, I'll move on to what I like to call a final assembly, even though it's probably not really final at all. Just adding the kind of basic effects to the clips, not color, not actual visual effects, just the easy ones like stabilizing my footage and adding any animations. So you can see on a lot of these clips, I will have animated them to move around, move the position throughout the clip and add some extra motion that way. I'll get all of that stuff out of the way before I move on to color sound. A lot of the time before you can stabilize a shot in Premiere, you end up having to nest it first. So I've mapped one of these buttons to easily just nest a clip. And then I can stabilize things that much faster. It's another effect that I add to almost all of my footage. So it makes sense to have this here to speed up that process. And now probably the most asked about parts of this process, we're gonna move on to color correction and color grading. And I'm not gonna bore you with the specifics of the process here because that's an entire video of its own and I've made countless videos about my grading process. So you know what, I'll throw a little playlist right up into the corner here and you can watch all of those videos together, all my videos about my grading process and learn a whole bunch about that. Fall down that separate rabbit hole, not in this video. You can also see here that I've switched over to a different layout on the Loop Deck Live, one that I made specifically for color grading. So I've mapped the dials here to a few different sliders that I use for grading. So I can easily just twist one and adjust my exposure. Maybe darken this down a bit, bring down the blacks a bit with a different slider, maybe bring up the whites a bit to introduce a bit of contrast, adjust the saturation, 
easily adjust like the temperature and the tent. I also use the global effects mute feature a lot while I'm grading to see kind of a before and after of what I'm doing. So I've mapped one of the buttons to that so I can easily just go back and forth there. And I also have one set to turn on and off the proxies. And you can also grade in full screen because you don't actually have to see the sliders to click on them and drag them around if you're using a tool like this. So pretty neat. When I'm grading, I also tend to copy, paste, and remove clips attributes quite a lot. So I will maybe copy the grade from this clip and then just paste it onto a different clip. And then if I decide that I don't like how that grade looks, then I can just remove attributes and get rid of it and start over. After grading, I'll then move on to any visual effects that I need to do for the project. And this really varies from video to video. It could be a completely non-existent step in the process, or it could be very extensive and take several days to complete. I try to do as much in Premiere Pro as possible. So for example, just adding like a simple overlay over a clip, but a lot of the time I do end up having to open these clips up in After Effects and get into the weeds a bit more on the effects. And now the final step before we export sound design. This is another topic that I've made about a hundred million videos about. So I have a playlist that those are all in and I will once again link that in the top corner of this video. So you can go check all of those out and learn way more extensively about that process specifically. I like to add the sound design below my music and voiceover tracks just for organization. And when I get to this part of the process, I'll typically lock the tracks that the music and voiceover are on so I don't accidentally put like a sound effect over them. I don't have too rigid of a process when it comes to sound. I kind of just work my way through the timeline one sequence at a time, adding maybe the ambience first, then some basic Foley type sound effects, finishing it off with some atmosphere and then moving on to the next general sequence. I have yet another loop deck layout set up just for sound design that has a few of the effects and tools that I use most frequently. So I can easily adjust the audio height to see that waveform, scrub through the sound at different speeds. I can add and remove keyframes to the sound, adjust the volume, move those keyframes around, easily add like a crossfade to the start of the clip, a bunch of those little adjustments that I make on like 90% of the sounds that go on the timeline. And finally, let's talk about the export. And if you're looking for a perfect set of export settings that's gonna preserve all of the detail and make your film look amazing on YouTube, unfortunately, you have come to entirely the wrong place because my export settings are literally just the Premiere default H.264 preset with the bitrate bumped up a bit to about 50 megabits a second. Everyone's workflow is different and it's important to tailor yours to your own style and preferences, but it's even more important to make sure that you don't get trapped in that process, that you don't optimize your workflow so much that you end up making the same thing over and over again. That being said, I'm always pretty fascinated to see how other people go about this process and what different choices they're making. So I hope that seeing my process here could help you to get some ideas and perspective for your own. Thanks again to the homies at Loop Deck for sponsoring this video. There will be some more information about where you can pick one of these up for yourself at the link in the description of this video. So go give it a clickety click and tell them I sent you. And of course, a huge thank you to you as well for watching this one, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Maybe it won't be so damn windy, and we can shoot it outside successfully next time. Only one way to find out.